The axillary fossa, or classically known to most people as the armpit, is the area that's bounded by the pectoralis major muscle anteriorly. You can see the pec major making the anterior border. Medially, the humerus, I'm sorry, laterally, the humerus. Medially, the serratus anterior and ribs. And posteriorly, the latissimus dorsi and teres major muscles form the boundaries of the axillary fossa. When you begin this dissection, the first thing you're going to notice is that there's a lot of fat and fascia uh, filling the axillary fossa. So it helps to have some sort of a um, sequential way of going through the dissection. We've obviously cleared out all of the fat in this preparation. And what I want to do is show you a nice systematic way of approaching the dissection. First thing you want to do is find the M. This M is sort of a classic landmark in the brachial plexus dissection. You can see here that the M has a lateral branch known as the musculocutaneous nerve, a contribution to the median nerve, another contribution to the median nerve, and then a medial branch, the ulnar nerve. Once you have this M um, cleared up and visible, you can then use the M to find all the other branches of the brachial plexus. Begin with the medial branch, the ulnar nerve, and follow it back until it forms the medial cord. You can then look for all the branches that are coming off the medial cord, and there are generally three branches off the medial cord. The lowest branch is the antebrachial cutaneous, the medial antebrachial cutaneous, which would be traveling down the arm and into the forearm. The next branch would be the brachial, medial brachial cutaneous, which is traveling into the arm, where it becomes cutaneous on the medial side of the arm. And the highest branch is a small nerve that goes to the pec minor and into the pec major, known as the medial pectoral nerve. Now, you can follow the medial pectoral nerve back out to the pectoralis minor muscle, and you can see that it oftentimes makes a loop with another nerve, the lateral pectoral nerve, which comes off the lateral cord. It may be hard to see in this preparation, but the lateral pectoral nerve is making that loop with the medial pectoral nerve right here. You can see the actual looping of those two nerves. The lateral pectoral nerve will take you to the lateral cord, and we can confirm that by going back to our original M. And we can see that the musculocutaneous nerve takes us back to the lateral cord. The only branch off the lateral cord was the already mentioned lateral pectoral nerve. Now, if you pull the lateral cord and the medial cord out of the way, flip them out of the way along with these cutaneous branches, you will expose the nerves that are behind the axillary artery that are all branches of the posterior cord. The two major branches off the posterior cord are these large nerves right here, the radial nerve, which continues down into the arm and forearm, and the axillary nerve, which dives down around the uh, back of the into the back of the axillary fossa to supply the teres minor and the deltoid muscle. These two major branches are the large branches of the posterior cord. So this would be the posterior cord. There are three other branches, smaller branches of the posterior cord, known as the upper, middle, and lower subscapulars. The easiest way to identify these three branches is to find the nerve that supplies the latissimus dorsi muscle. And we can see the latissimus dorsi muscle right here with a nerve going into it. That is the middle subscapular nerve, also known as the thoracodorsal nerve. Now, since that's the middle subscapular, there should be a nerve coming off the posterior cord inferior to that one, the lower subscapular, and a nerve coming off the posterior cord superior to that one, the upper subscapular. So that gives us the three subscapular nerves, which are all branches off the posterior cord. We've now found the terminal branches of the brachial plexus and the branches off the medial cord, the lateral cord, and the posterior cord. Now we're going to go further up the brachial plexus and see what contributes to form the cords and then look at branches from the trunks. The three cords, medial, lateral, and posterior cord, are each formed from divisions that come from the trunks. So the three trunks, the upper, middle, and lower trunk, seen right here, lower trunk, middle trunk, and upper trunk, each divides 
into what's known as an anterior and a posterior division. And we can see those th divisions off of each trunk. The lower trunk has an anterior division and a posterior division. Notice that the posterior division forms the posterior cord and the anterior divisions go to form medial and lateral cords. The middle trunk has an anterior division and a posterior division. Once again, the posterior division forms the posterior cord and the anterior divisions contribute to either the medial or lateral cord. And finally, the upper trunk also has an anterior and a posterior division. Once again, the posterior division forms the posterior cord and the anterior division contributes to either the lateral or medial cord. Now, what we want to do next is look for branches that arise from the trunks. And as far as we're concerned, there's only one important branch that comes off the trunk that we're really going to be worried about, and that is the suprascapular nerve, which comes off the upper trunk. So we can see the suprascapular nerve coming off the upper trunk and running back to the scapula through the suprascapular notch. We've now looked at all the branches from the trunks that we're concerned with, and the next thing we want to do is look for branches that come off the roots. Now, the roots of the brachial plexus are C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. There are two branches that come from the roots that we're going to be concerned with, the long thoracic nerve and the dorsal scapular nerve. The long thoracic nerve is very easy to find uh, as you look at its terminal, at its terminal distribution. You can find this nerve by picking up the serratus anterior muscle and looking on its superficial surface. This is one of these situations where the nerve actually supplies the muscle from its superficial surface rather than its deep. And it's very easy to see the long thoracic nerve as it lies on the serratus anterior. You could trace this nerve back to the roots of the brachial plexus and find that it actually arises from C5, 6, and 7. Finally, the last branch of the brachial plexus that we want you to try and find is a small branch that arises from C5 and penetrates the scalene muscles to dive into the levator scapula and the rhomboids. This is known as the dorsal scapular nerve and can be seen right here as it dives into the scalene muscle. Now that we've looked at the branches of the brachial plexus, what we're going to do on the other side is cut away the things that are made up of the anterior division components of the brachial plexus to uncover the brachial and axillary artery that lies underneath. So we're going to uncover the artery underneath by pulling those branches away. Now we're going to be concerned primarily with the axillary artery, but we will look down into the beginning of the brachial artery as well in this dissection. The axillary artery is that segment of the artery that is the continuation of the subclavian artery, and it begins at the lower border of the first rib, which is about here, even though we've actually removed the first rib at this point. And it runs from the lower border of the first rib all the way down to the point where it crosses the lower border of the teres major, which is about here, as you can see by the tendon of the latissimus dorsi muscle underneath. So this would be the segment that includes the axillary artery. It's nice to divide the axillary up into three parts based on the insertion point of the pectoralis minor muscle. So if we flip this pec minor back down, you can see that we can divide the axillary artery into a segment that's above the pec minor, a segment that is under the pec minor, and a segment that is below the pec minor. So we'll now move the pec minor back out of the way, and we'll look at the branches of those three segments. Conveniently, there is one branch off the first segment, two branches off the second, and three branches off the third. The branch off the first segment is a very small branch, which is oftentimes torn, and as you can see, it's also torn in our dissection, the supreme thoracic. This is a small branch that supplies the first two intercostal spaces. The branches off the second division of the axillary artery are branches to the muscles, the pectoralis major and minor, the coracoid process, the acromion, and they come from a trunk known as the thoracoacromial trunk. You can see one branch of the thoracoacromial trunk right here. You may have multiple branches. Here's another little tiny branch 
that is considered part of the thoracoacromial trunk. The second branch off the second division of the axillary artery is an artery known as the lateral thoracic artery, which travels to the serratus anterior and ultimately supplies the serratus anterior muscle and is oftentimes seen traveling along with the long thoracic nerve, which we saw in the previous part of this dissection. Finally, that takes us to the third division of the axillary artery. And again, there are three branches off the third division. And we can see those three branches here. A very large one, this sort of curly artery, is the subscapular artery. The subscapular artery will divide into two branches. One of them goes down and travels to the latissimus dorsi muscle along with the thoracodorsal nerve, or the middle subscapular. This is known as the thoracodorsal artery. The other branch ends up going around the scapula as a circumflex scapular artery. And you can see it here diving in to go around the scapula from the lateral border. The other two branches off the third division of the axillary artery are known as the humeral circumflex branches. And they can be seen oftentimes as individual branches or sometimes two of them coming off the same trunk. In this case, we have two branches coming off the same trunk. Generally, a smaller anterior humeral circumflex, seen here, and a larger posterior humeral circumflex. These two branches wrap around the humerus and supply a collateral circulation around the head of the humerus. The axillary artery then continues down below the lower border of the teres major, where it changes its name to the brachial artery. The brachial artery has a branch that is easy to find because it travels with the radial nerve. And you can see here the deep brachial artery, first branch of the brachial artery, the deep brachial or profunda brachii traveling with the radial nerve. This artery wraps around behind the humerus along with the radial nerve.